Hey, homeschool mama. If you want to learn how to de-school your homeschool, you have homework to do. I think that's hilarious. One homeschool mom to another giving you homework. <laughs> okay, so let's chat about de-schooling for your homeschool life. Here is a story from my last fall. Despite being invited to a not back to school picnic last fall, it did not dawn on me that public school started on the same day because I'm just not accustomed to it. Summer activities still occupied my schedule. The first week of September, that's not school because the weather is still summery and it's lovely and the playground is quiet. That should have been my first hint. Since our family isn't bound by any provincial outcomes or guidelines or school schedules or curricula, I'm free to do what I want to do. And in the beginning that felt scary, but now it just feels really empowering. We've learned to do what works in our homes. We follow our kids' interests and ours, and we allow for interruptions and changing rhythms of our family, all because we've de-schooled. And so you know, this wasn't always so, even in the beginning, despite the guidelines and the curriculum expectations or the provincial expectations, I still thought like a schooled person. I brought my kids home and I brought them into my home, which I created a private school for. <laughs> Cause we do, this is what we do. This is what we know, so this is what we do. So here are seven lessons I've learned to de-school in my homeschool. The first one is that our schedule is defined by our family's rhythms. For many years, autumn was our season to travel. I found it challenging to rein in energy before Christmas, so we didn't do a traditional learning approach in December, and I hear often people don't. Family birthdays are equivalent to a school holiday because we don't usually do anything on them. Since there's so much to do outside in May in my part of the world, we direct our energies towards botany or gardening, whatever you want to call it, but we do things outside. We learn about the weather. We watch birds. We do poetry by the pond. We just go outside. And if you want to determine your family's rhythm, I have a few things that you can check out or read. They are four posts, how to homeschool plan, find fresh ideas, create renewed routines, and include kids in your homeschool, how to create a homeschool routine that works for you, addressing the question of, are you homeschooling good enough? Especially when you're trying to de-school, creating learning opportunities and recreating school subjects. Sometimes our homeschool moves in and out of different seasons. So how we homeschool changes. So I don't think de-schooling is just for the new homeschool mama. I think it's for everyone that periodically we need to check in and see if we could maybe free ourselves from a few more mindsets, school mindsets. Sometimes our homeschool moves in and out of different seasons. So I've provided two posts for you to read, one called Two Seasons in Our Homeschool, The Formal Studies and The Unschooling Season. And also, I share my story about the surprising transition from school to homeschool. Whatever season of homeschool that you're in, you can build on and lean in to more homeschool freedoms when you de-school. The second thing that I want to share with you or a lesson that I've learned as I've de-schooled my homeschool is that our world is filled with printed books, with sales for books everywhere. There's textbooks and workbooks and novels and bookstores and homeschool mom blogs, Facebook threads, curriculum fairs and website. They all abound. So I've got three ideas or suggestions for you as you're de-schooling and getting excited about purchasing curriculum. These are my encouragements to you. One is don't overbuy, although you probably will, but don't overbuy, that's what I would say. Don't overbuy. During your first year of homeschooling, I definitely overbought, assuming that we were going to cover way more than we could. Every year in the last decade and a half, I've bought less and less, sometimes relying on the previous year's curriculum or purchases, and sometimes I just heavily relied 
on my library cards, which are an incredible resource for everyone. The second thing that I would suggest to you is that kids should influence your choice of homeschool curriculum. I have even heard my kids comment on curriculum like, I don't want to get a curriculum that I don't want to use. And you know, girlfriend, neither do you, because they're going to complain and they're going to be resistant to whatever you're putting in front of them. So even if at the beginning of the year they have a general anticipation or excitement about what you're doing, because nobody holds on to that excitement throughout the entire year, but if you can at least in the beginning of the year be excited about the curriculum and your child is too, then that might be the right curriculum choice for you. I'm often asked about our less than conventional approach and if we're not following public educational outcomes, where do we find curriculum? And I share a few posts when you buy new homeschool curriculum, five clever suggestions, choosing the right homeschool curriculum and what to ask yourself before you choose the best curriculum for your homeschool so that you can get clarity on that. When your kids are engaged in their educational choices, they're more engaged in their learning. The third thing that I would share with you is that every year is a lesson in learning for my kids and for me. Who are we educating? Our specific children. So if we're educating those specific kids, then we should allow for that child to lead the learning. And they are going to lead a learning, but they're also going to continue to develop. And that means they're going to change or they're going to shift and you're going to see different things at different times at different stages. So you want to accommodate for that. Our kids are our point of reference for what curriculum we choose or how we assign our time or whether we assign their time at all. Learning, their focus of learning should be more child-led. Not every resource we think we'll use is quite what we thought. There are some wasted resources for sure. Just imagine if you have a few children, you'll identify that maybe one child actually likes reading history independently. One child likes colored worksheets or they like doing math workbooks. Maybe one child really prefers kinesthetic activities, things where they can touch with their hands, like using wiki sticks or, you know, learning how to spell with wiki sticks, creating letters out of wiki sticks. Maybe another child really loves doing chemistry experiments. A National Geographic chemistry set was purchased for each of my, well, three of my four kids. They love doing those. There were many actually science boxes that the kids have used over the years. We've used Apologia and Brave Writer online courses. One of my kids, one of my teens used college classes. And you know, learning should be child-led. That means you're gonna be watching them each year. What do they need? Now, every child is different and every year is different. The fourth thing that I can share with you is that I spend my time differently as a homeschool mom and I spend my money differently as a homeschool mom. When I think back to my school experience, like my conventional school experience, I remember grade one and having an option to go to the Zellers and purchasing a few outfits for the first day of grade one. I was so excited, but I was told I can't wear that outfit until the first day of grade one. So I remember tucking my new outfits, probably three, into a bunk bed drawer that I wasn't allowed to touch. I had a blue plaid two button shirt, which I think I still have somewhere. We visited the Zellers for our grade specific supply list, maybe another box of non-broken crayons and a package of smelly markers. Now that I'm a mom who has collected probably 652 broken crayons and I'm not actually kidding, should we compare? I'm sure you do too. Um, and purchase oodles of white erasers that, by the way, you know where they are in the sofa cushions. And I know that there's only probably eight Crayola markers that are actually working right now, but possibly 67 barely sharpened pencil crayons. I know that I no longer have to do that official supply trip. So at the end of each year, you can just take a look and see if you actually need the supplies or if you're just doing it because it's a habit. I've learned to spend differently. So I just haven't bought those things all year long. I buy what I need. Like I purchase kids clothing based on what they need, not on the seasonal shifts always. 
and not on the latest style, for sure. Obviously, I don't need to buy indoor shoes, though every Christmas I do provide fluffy socks. I try not to buy it all, but I do, and it entirely depends on the tangible need in front of me, but I most certainly buy differently. And the fifth thing I would share is ask yourself what you believe in education to be anyway. If I thought of education as solely an in-classroom, textbook-driven, test-proven, teacher-taught education, then I would put my kids in school. I would follow the system, its schedule, and its curriculum. And education includes academics, of course, at least that's how I see it. Sometimes you learn things, you have knowledge bits that you're accruing, maybe not conventional things, but you're learning all sorts of things. So you have knowledge bits, but the sky's the limit to what you could know or what you could learn. Google's called Google for a reason, and it contains more knowledge than most knowledgeable human beings might embody. Is our goal for education then to enable another Google, a Google in a human form? Our family might not be going to school, but we are still learning. I believe in education is learning to live this life well, to engage in meaningful work, to nurture our community and fully engage our life. The sixth thing I want to share with you in How to Do School 101 is that every year we've enjoyed our homespun version of a not back to school party. We plan our daily schedules with rainbow colored pens, bright colored markers. We take grade photos, lovely memories, and discuss our academic plans. And sometimes for the older kids even get planners or schedules and all the things, and each kid gets a box of Smarties at the bottom of their new book stack because they are about to get smarter. Or so I think. They like the Smarties, and if they don't, I do. You can find more not back to school party ideas in the link here, but remember that, as John Taylor Gatto says, there isn't a right way to become educated. There are as many ways as there are fingerprints. And the seventh and last thing that I want to share about de-schooling in your home is that life is learning. In the meantime, when we're not doing formal routines, formal academic stuff, we have Legos to play with and dogs to walk and chickens to corral, at least here, trampolines to bounce on, a garden bounty to process, and more late evenings because you can do late evenings if you're not in school. There are a million and one things we're going to learn from the moment we're born to the moment we die. We'll have fewer than a million but still many iterations of what we actually do in this life. We might work at various places like a fast food restaurant, a grocery store in the bakery, a real estate office as the receptionist, a billing clerk at a doctor's office, a unit clerk in the labor and delivery at the local hospital, a registered nurse in the perinatal float pool, a new mom with two little girls, a homeschool mom of four kids, a writer, a host of a podcast, and a life coach for moms. All my iterations of what I've done for work. Throughout each of those roles, I've learned one million and one things I continue to learn too. So homeschool mama, you have your homework. You can de-school your homeschool, you can reimagine your homeschool life, or you can just release from all the schooled notions and perspectives before you even start your homeschool. Use the de-school your homeschool journaling workbook below as a self-coaching tool so you can reimagine your homeschool life. 